placed on YouTube later on, and you'll be able to watch it again as often as you like. And if anybody's watching on Catch Up, then um, very warm welcome to you too. Okay, so without further ado, I think we will crack on. See that down there. Brilliant. Right, so today's um, one topic, two very important key areas. Um, won't take too long at all, but just want to go through these with you. Um, there is a chat function, as with any Teams meeting. If you um, have a question, please do type it in the chat or the Q&A, and we will come to those at the end. Um, today is looking at the Selective Dry Cow tool. Now, this might be an underutilized area in Herd Companion, um, but it is a really useful piece of information. It's found under the production menu, Selective Dry Cow, and it actually opens up into a separate window. And here's one I made earlier. So it's got its own sort of branding, and it's a single sheet of A4 with bits of information from different parts of NMR and NML. So this can be created for anybody that doesn't milk record with NMR, but may be using NML for payment testing, um, which is, I think, now 100% of all dairy farmers in the UK anyway. So if you're a consultant or an advisor or a vet and you want to glean, you know, at least some information from the farm, if they're not milk recording at all, then we have, you know, this really useful tool to, to gain as, you know, as much info as we can get hold of, really. So the first section is divided into sections, <clears throat> and it tells you where that data is coming from. I'll just come up a little bit. So bulk cell count results, data provided by NML. So this is bulk testing as part of that payment process. Um, we have a nice little graph. So over the last year, average cell count for the year. And then we've got our cell count bands here. So what proportion of the herd is over 200? Again, as a bulk sample, so it's just one sample, of course, each time. Um, but it is daily, so any you know general fluctuations, you might see it, so there's a bit of a rise on this one, for example, over the last few days. Um, what proportion are over 400? So nothing to worry about in this particular example. Then we can scroll down, and you've got that graph also on the MQM, on the very front screen of, of um, Herd Companions, so it is there. Um, to view in different places, as are some of these actually, but it's just one place where we can collate this kind of data. Individual cow cell counts. So now we are moving on to milk recording per se, and it says up here as well. Um, so there's a few things in here, really interesting figures, um, once you know what they mean, of course. So lactation cell count, maximum cell counts of all lactations completed last year. So what does this actually mean? So for this one, Maximum cell count um, less than 200. 56% of the herd had no high cell counts through the whole of their lactation last year. Um, so a really good starting point to decide in terms of selective dry cow therapy, just over half the herd had no infections at all. So that's what that means. So it's a really indicative figure of, of where we're at from a collective point of view. Then we've got this dry period management. So this is um, drawn from the what used to be the old health monitor on herd companion. So you might well have touched on the, these areas before. And you can drill down with all of this. So beauty of milk recording, we've got a nice graph showing us um, very simply what happened to the cell count or what was the cell count before drying off compared to the cell count after calving. So across the dry period, have we got a level of infection that's been maintained? So a high to high instance, and that's that dark blue, which is now pretty much eliminated here. Um, this is a block carving herd, incidentally. This is Hartbury University, which very kindly let us use their data for demonstration purposes. Um, so you will see some, some peaks and troughs, you know, if there aren't drying any, drying any cows off at a particular time. We've then got a low to high, so mid blue, if you like, uh, so possibly catching an infection across the dry period or freshly carved cows, how they are managed. Um, cell count was low, it's now high. So, you know, um, infection rate, if you like. Um, high to low, that's this lovely colour blue here. This is our cure rate. 
and then low to low the rest of the area here so we've you know we've prevented infection at the start they weren't any problem to begin with and they come in nice and low as well and these thresholds um, on this report it is fixed at 200 but as you'll see elsewhere you are able to adjust that 200 mark for specific areas in the uh, website okay so then i come down a bit further mastitis events so again recording through nmr have we got any mastitis cases that might be the very first question is this graph populated so if not you know pretty much everybody would have a mastitis case i would imagine from here and there so it's something we can maybe um, look at further if if you're not seeing anything on this graph total cases in the year so actually having said that you know there's not a huge problem in here in any case but there are some so our population is the the pale blue bar chart and we've got our cases over time here so there's a little bit of a pattern it emerges in certain months of the year but generally speaking not an issue hugely cases per hundred cows so this is a nice benchmark where we can compare like with like so it's only nine and then what proportion of those cases are occurring in the first 30 days so as an index case only the one so really not an, an initial problem in those, um, those early days of lactation Again, we can then drill down later on into her companion to see, right, who are the cows that have had mastitis? What quarters are most prevalent? Are there any patterns emerging on that? And this last section of the selective dry cow tool is again back to bulk samples. Now, this is um, an optional test which we can provide for any bulk sample um, at NML. They are kept in the fridge for seven days, so we can, um, you know, give us a ring and call for a test at any time. And it's basically mastitis ID. So we're looking uh, in the bulk tank what types of bacteria are present and how prevalent are they. And it's based best done as a quarterly test so you can see here we haven't done any for a while but this is quarter, first quarter of 2020 um, and then you know Mr. Mr. Gap perhaps um, just to see how things you know trend wise are, are happening so if there's a positive you've got a red block um, if everything else is negative then that's fine but you know different ones are occurring at different times so we can you know investigate further again with individual cows following that but it's a nice starting point so do give us a ring if you want to explore that that one there so this list um, you could print off if you wanted to. It's just a straightforward PDF file. Um, you know, you can print it out. You could save it out of your, her companion if you wanted to, and then you can share it and discuss it with your vet um, offline. OK, so that's the first part. Then I wanted to go back into her companion. So to give us the level of detail that we're looking for when we're coming to dry cows off, and if you've got, um, you know, data from NMR, so it's an NMR recorded herd and we don't have any other software potentially, then this is absolutely the place to go to for all of your selective dry cow therapy needs. So I reports cows to dry. And there is a default setting here for cows that are due to dry in the next 30 days. And because I'm a block carving herd here, I've got nothing. So that's fine. What I'll do, I'll just stick another zero in there. So you can change it as far ahead as you like. Dry period length, there's nothing in there, but our default is set to 56 days before carving. So if that's totally different from what you do, you can alter that one. And here we've got one of our threshold settings. So you can alter this figure as well, which will have a bearing on what constitutes as a high cell count on the report. So if you make any changes, click apply. And then we've got some cows to work with now. So with all things Her Companion, in previous webinars, we've looked at the sorting and the filtering um, aspects of these. And there's another little bit on here, which is really effective for all of this data. So once you've found a particular cow or if it's a great big long list as in this case you know everything's coming up for drying off fairly soon we can search for an individual animal so that's the first thing i can just type in a cow line number so don't feel you have to scroll through to find who you're looking for if i just backspace and take that out again 
it will go back to its original format. And with all of these things on her companion, if you do make a change of any kind, apart from data entry itself, it will always revert back to its original format. So you, you can't break anything really. We've got our due date for drying off, and that's the default order you can see in here. But you are at liberty to change it to exactly how you want. So we could look at it from a line number perspective. Just a single click on any one of these headers, and you can change the sort order. And if you need any indicators as to what these columns of data are telling you, cell counts three recordings ago, two, and the current cells. So that's what those three columns of data are there. Now, for this report to work in its fullest binary, we need to expand our page size. So all of these reports are set to a limit of 20 cows. Click on this one, just make it all. And then we have a great big long list to work through. So that might be as far as you want to go. You, you know who's due to dry. Um, as you were back online and broader now, aren't we? Let me put that back into this one for a moment. There we are. So we could print this list off exactly as it is and, and go about our business. Um, printing on her companion, incidentally, um, if you go up to the very top here, you've got three dots. So I'm using Edge at the moment. It works absolutely fine on Chrome. Um, there is uh, Firefox is not too bad. Some graphs can look a bit funny on Firefox, but generally speaking, the grids are absolutely fine. Um, Internet Explorer is possibly, you know, a bit phased out now, so you might struggle with that going forward. So three dots, and then you've got print here and it'll just give you a print preview so you know what you're about to expect um yeah so it's just completed a list on there top but what i want to do just to take it a step further yes we know who's going to dry off we can see the last three cell counts here so this is all about selective dry therapy at the end of the day we've also got our yoni's group highlighted at the end so this has a bearing on on perhaps protocols as well particularly with fresh cows and we have anything above our high cell count threshold shown in red so you can see those for the last three quite clearly we also have number of highs and hovering the mouse over so these are how many high in this case 200 over 200 cells in the current lactation so going back to the selective dry cow tool there were no more than 56 percent um, so if I sort by this column, we can then see in sort of categories really who the totally clear cows are, the borderline cows, and the ones that maybe need a bit more therapy applied. So all of these cows here, zero high cell counts out of 10 recordings. And for um, you know, in the most part, most people record monthly, but that's not exclusive at all. So we may have, um, you know, six weekly or eight weekly as well options there. But this is 10 recordings of the last 10 recordings, no high cell counts whatsoever. So we know that we can safely bracket these cows into one form of drying off. As with all these things, you know, to be done in consultation with your vet, absolutely get them involved in this kind of discussion. We also have mastitis cases, so that's an important element. If the cow has had a clinical case of mastitis and it's been recorded, it's going to show in here in terms of a number. But we're all looking good so far on that front as well for this herd. Now we get down into a bit more. So these perhaps haven't had as many recordings, but they're all still perfectly healthy. So we like lots of zeros on this. That's a really good sign. We get into the more interesting detail around about here. So one high cell count out of 10, one out of four, and so on. So we can ask a question like, how high was high? Well, very high in some cases, borderline in others. So these, you know, it's, it's each individual cow um, in turn, really, to discuss what the best protocols would be for those. Then we get into a couple of instances of mastitis cases as well alongside some high cell counts so we might need to work out when that mastitis occurred or it could be you know quite straightforward well she's had a couple of high cell counts anyway so we're veering towards the you know other aspects of dry therapy um, where it gets interesting and perhaps we need to dig a little further is when we have a cow such as this one here 5098 low cell counts for the last three 
but she's had two high tests out of nine. So what we might want to do for that type of cow is come up to the top again. And you could filter those out as well. So if you're quite happy, you know, with all of these ones, we could we could sort the sort the table the other way around if you wanted to. So I'm going to show extra columns and this button is on every grid. Sometimes there isn't a lot to add, but on this one, there's a fair few bits of, of information. So we've got this really useful option, days since high and days since mastitis, actually. And these are extra columns you can slot in to your grid. So literally click and drag, pop that into there. You can put it in any way you like. Let's have that one as well. We've got days to carve. You could also have your due to carve date. You might want your ear tag, maybe a bit of color coding on Yoni's highest cell count they've ever had and so on. Equally, if you want to get rid of something from your grid before you print it off, uh, you know, I could just grab a header such as group, not using that one and let go and pop it into the column chooser. So you can swap about as much as you like there. Now we've got all the information we need. I come right back down. So this column here, fortunately, your head is, gets stuck at the top. Um, so I don't know if I can filter these out, actually. Let me just try that. I don't know if this particular filter is going to work on this. Um, let's find my cow again. It was a two out of nine, wasn't it? Bup, 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 bup. Yeah, I'm just going to try something here. If not, I'll just scroll down. Yes, perfect. So using my filter, I filtered out all the two out of nines. So two high tests. This was the cow 5098 we were interested in. Last three cell counts have been low, two out of nine. Days since high. So that is how many days ago her high cell count occurred. One of them. We know she's had a previous one before that. So quite a long time ago, whereas this next cow, 4911, very low cell counts currently, two high tests, 114 days ago was one, and she's had mastitis as well, 156 days ago. So, you know, I'm not the vet here. That's absolutely down to you and your advisor to discuss what, what you do from there. But with all of that information together on one list, you know, you can, you can really see a clear pathway for a lot of these cows individually. Um, I was going to say something there and it's completely gone out of my head <laughs> there we go uh there we go so that is that is it really on that one i'll just take that out again we've then got our high list of everybody together so just looking at it from the other end we can see um the bottom end of the table where things will be a lot more clearer um, rather than the borderline cows you know these ones we can see we've got lots of red we've got some bold red as well and um, you know nine out of nine out of ten tests have been high the last one was 23 days ago so it's a it's sort of no-brainer end really of the table to decide what we're going to do with these ones okay so, as I say, I wasn't going to be too long today in terms of explaining what we were going to cover. Are there any questions, really? Come back to my screen here. Oh, I've got something in the chat. That's brilliant. Right, so, don't have Yoni's data in the column for one of your hers, despite them testing and having results on NMR elsewhere. So interesting one. Thank you. Um, actually, if I go back to my sharing, that might be better. Minimize that one. So that is there as a default. It might be that it's only linking to a herd wise Yonis, which is up in disease monitor. So herd wise is the, the name for our quarterly testing for the whole herd. It's possible. And I'll check this out, Olivia, that um, we've got you know, herd tracker as a 30 cow screen um, or Yoni's one, two, three, where it's a bit more ad hoc. So it's possible that the ad hoc Yoni's don't show on that table. Uh, this herd is on Herdwise, so I can see it. But if you can't from a particular herd, um, I'll have a chat to you later and we can just work out which herd it is and um, 
and what sort of service they're on. So I'll find out for that one. Thank you. They are on herd wise. Right, brilliant. Okay, so there's some that I missed then because that should be there by default. Fantastic. Any other questions from anyone? Um, if not, that's fine. What I would also like to point out to you, if you all have a look at the chat now, and uh, yeah, just click on the chat, scroll up to the top. There's a few little bits of pieces, but you'll see there's an event on there with a link. And that is the link to the next webinar, which is on the 13th of July, which is a Thursday. And it's an earlier time of 10 o'clock. So if you're a regular listener <laughs> to my channel and uh, you want to book in early to avoid disappointment, that is the, um, the registration link to that one. I'm going to leave the meeting open for a minute so you can click on that and, and sign up straight away if you want to. Uh, but I will be sending out the invites as I do normally and, and watch out on social media as well. They're all there. Um, the recording of this one will be on YouTube as soon as I've got it processed. And, um, you know, you know where I am. If you think of anything else, any other questions going forward um, that I can help you with, please give me a shout. Uh, the next in uh, topic, incidentally, I should have told you that, is on Ingenious, which is the section of breeding uh, and lots of information on there from a milk recording perspective. Even if you're not doing any genomic testing, there's an awful lot of information on there that we can look at for the herd. So really useful. Do join me then if you can. Thank you all very much indeed. Um, I'm finishing now, but as I say, I'm just going to leave the meeting open for a little minute. Feel free to disappear. Have a good day. Uh, but if you want to join the, the next one, it's on there, ready to go. <laughs>